Whoa there, whoa. Whoa there, Dusty. Whoa there. Well, hey there, Faith Church. Johnny Bronco here, and it's another week of our series, True Grit. My horse Dusty here heard the dinner bell and took off like a rocket. But isn't that how life is sometimes? You know, we, we want to get to where we want to go so quickly, we don't want to go through the process of what it takes to get there. And what we really need to do is just hold our horses and wait on God's time. See, that's exactly... Johnny, thank God I found you. I've been looking all over for you. We gotta go right now. Slow down there, slow down. You ever heard the phrase, hold your horses? Yeah, but what does that have to do with anything right now, Johnny? Well, well, I, see, I was just telling these fine folks that when we say hold your horses, it's God's way of reminding us to trust his timing. You seem to be a little too much of a hurry right now. <laughs> but we, we got, we got, Johnny, yes, we got to so There you go, being impatient again. You gotta slow down. <sighs> well, saloon's on fire. What? Oh, shoot. Come on, Dusty. My gosh, my favorite part of this whole series is this crazy cowboy. How about you? <laughs> Unbelievable. I just laugh so much. By the way, speaking of one of my favorite things is my daughter singing today. Ashton, you did so good. My God. Come on, Florida. You can do better than that. She's so sweet. Her and Elijah did so good. People here loved it as well. And uh, we actually want to make a quick announcement. When Ashley was little, I was thinking about it on the way here today. She said, she would say, Dad, 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 do you want to know something funny? She had a list. Do you want to know something funny? And I said, oh, yeah, of course, Ashley, tell me something funny. So, or she'd say something important. So I do have something important to share with you. We have a leadership conference coming up for all of our church. That's right. And so you can scan it. There's a, this conference is pretty amazing. It's, it's teaching you how to lead not only for, we started out when we did it was just for our dream team. And the dream team, the people that got here at all the campuses early today, set it up at the crack of dawn. Some campuses load in and load out. Andy, can you look at me a little bit? Uh, it's loading in and loading out. Then, and then there's also people who uh, every week get here and change babies' diapers. Can I get an amen? And the worship team. I do want to say on the worship team, we could use some white people. Can I get an amen, right? It's like every week they're like, we struggle to save our lives to get white people to sing. And I know white people can't jump, but surely somebody can sing, okay? And so we need that. We need some worship people there on the singing department. But how this evolved was we, we started finding out that some of the top leaders in our church were people that ran organizations and they were great leaders. And so we invited those people uh, to speak. And it started raising the leadership quadrant of everybody's uh, actual business. Their, their businesses started growing. In fact, have you ever been to Chick-fil-A versus like uh, Burger King, right? And how many at Burger King, they don't say my pleasure, right? Although let's thank God for Flame World Whoppers. God, we thank you for that. But culture is everything. So this conference is coming up. We're inviting everybody to be a part of it. You don't have to join the dream team. I think after you are there kicking the tires, you're going to want to do it. Because when you do life together, life just gets better. In fact, big shout out to Earth City. I need to make an announcement to you guys. They're packing that first service so bad that you can't hardly get in. So we're asking people in the next couple of weeks, if some of you who love Jesus would migrate to the 1230. I know it's a massive building, but we need to make space and place for new people that come to that early slot. Come to the late one. That's where I kind of start singing and shucking and bucking anyway. So go ahead and give it up for those announcements today. Today, I want to talk about being in a hurry. How many of y'all like me and you don't like to wait? Raise your hands. I don't like to wait at a red light. I'll look around and wonder, wonder if it really will take a picture. That's why I carry a picture of somebody else slide it up on my face and drive through. Um, I also don't, I, I don't like to like do my own self scanning at the store. I feel like that's somebody else's job. I got a lot of other jobs. Raise your hand with you with me on that. I'm like I'm not going to win employee of the month here. Um, when do I get my vacation days? I don't work here. But if I see a long line, I'll say, okay, I'll go ahead and scan. Anybody with me on this deal? Because we don't like to wait. Everybody shout, I don't like to wait. Look at your neighbor and say, don't make me wait. Say, I will leave you in a heartbeat. I ain't waiting. Uh, the interesting thing about God, though, is God's timing is so much different than our timing. He would do weird things like when Lazarus, you know, Lazarus died. Remember this story in the Bible? Lazarus died and his family, Jesus would go over to their house oftentimes for dinner. This is where Mary and Martha would cook and love on him. And then he, when, when, when Lazarus died, they came and they're like, hey, you know, there was no text message. So it took like two days to get to him. 
when they got to Jesus, Jesus said, I love them. Check this out. I love them so much, I waited two more days. How many of y'all don't understand that? You're like, if you loved me and you were eating my chicken and you loved my wings, come on, somebody, then when I called and I needed you, you should have been there. But God doesn't see the way we see. Shout amen to that. And so if we could see what God sees, it would make sense. But his ways aren't our ways and his thoughts aren't our thoughts. Then Jesus eventually comes and they said, immediately, they meet him at the porch and they're like, if you'd have been here four days ago. And Jesus is like, hey, it's okay. I am here now. I'm the resurrection and the life. But it it looked like he was dead. In fact, he was dead. The Bible says he, he stinks. I mean, you all know that's a problem. But God knew what he was doing because God was in the healing business and he healed people, but there wasn't a lot of resurrection. So then this time, under, in that season, they thought that people possibly could maybe resurrect themselves in two days, but not four. And so on the fourth day, Jesus shows up and Lazarus ends up being resurrected. And so God gets glory. That's where it talks about that in that scripture in John. God gets glory in taking dead things and resurrecting them. So right now it might look like your marriage is dead. Your hope is dead. Your career is dead. But listen, it might not be dead. In in the natural, it might look that way. But God's super gets on your natural and it becomes supernaturally a miracle from God that you will understand later. Come on, somebody ought to shout amen to that today. Isaiah 55, this is the scripture I quoted. It says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor my ways your way, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Wow. Remember that God's timing is perfect. Yeah. I don't like his timing. I think he takes too long. <laughs> Raise your hand if you're with me. Yeah. Some of you are like, I'm in church. I know he has cameras. I'm not raising my hand. <laughs> I said, God, I really think you ought to do it now. I really think I need my husband now. I need my wife now. If, if you've got a husband or wife, you realize you could have waited. Just a <laughs> I, I need kids now. In fact, today I showed up and I was on time. The, the, the security team, they're like, oh my gosh, you're on time. I'm like, yes, because Nicole's out of town. I'm on time when Nicole's not with me. <laughs> when the Lord comes back, Nicole will be telling Jesus, one minute, I got this one eyelash. I'll be out in just a minute. So sometimes you think you got to get it now, but in reality, if you could see it, you would realize that God's timing is better because if he gave it to you now, you might mess it up or you might not even appreciate it because we know our timeline. We're like, God, you need to do it right now. And God's like, no, 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 no. I'm going to wait four days to do it or I'm going to do it later. In fact, here's a real life story. Years ago, we had bought this piece of property and in St. Louis, you'll be familiar with Villa Ridge, and it was kind of out in the country, and it was on this, it was on a gravel road, and I had a black car and black motorcycles, and I didn't like a dirt, a, a dirt road, a gravel road. I didn't like a dirt road either, but a gravel road. And the car would get dirty, and I, I was always griping at the subdivision, like, we should all get together, we should pave this, and, and it was just like driving me crazy. And it wasn't a very far drive, actually. And lived there for several years, And then the last year that we were there, they started talking about actually making it happen that year. Well, it was that year that they knocked out my door and we had paid $165,000 for this house. It was a miracle of God. We had fixed it up and so on. But then somebody came and said, hey, um, we want to buy your house. And I said, it's not for sale. They said, we want to buy your house. I said, it's not for sale. He said, I own the local Chevy dealer and I want to buy your house. I like your barn. I like this. He said, I'm prepared to give you a million dollars. And I yelled at Nicole, pack your panties. We're moving. <laughs> okay. So we moved. Tell me y'all, that's where the Beverly Hillbillies, we moved away from there. Okay. But what was cool and interesting about God's timing, had we paved the road when I wanted to pave it, it would have probably had potholes in it. You know how it looks and repairs and, and little cracks all in it. But this road looked pristine because God knew, yes, I can give you what you want so your car is not dirty. But what if I actually gave you what you needed and you actually had enough money to buy a new car at the end of the trail? Because somebody ought to shout amen to this right now. Because God sees what we don't see. Everybody shout amen to that. Look at your neighbor and say, I can tell you needed this today. 
Uh, you might want to get out your phone if you, if you want this is good to memorize. When, this, this quote, I, I, I made it up and I want, you to, I want you to let it settle in your heart. When it's God's time, you can't stop it. And when it's not God's time, you can't force it. So people have tried to stop me. Cities have tried to stop me. Municipalities have tried to stop me. Experts have tried to stop me. Little spurts have tried to stop me. And when God puts you on the wall, nothing can stop you. Isaiah 54, 17 will kick in. No weapon formed against you will prosper. And God will supernaturally take you where you need to go when it's his timing. But if you try to do it on your timing and you try to force it and you push in the door or you try to kick open the door, come to find out what was behind the door was not really what you wanted. But if you get the right door, and I believe in 24, God's going to open up the right door like never before for you. And you're going to look at that and you'll realize... Thank God God didn't do this because if he had done this, I wouldn't have got that. There's an old song that says, uh, what's it say? Uh, it says uh, something like, uh, it's too bad that I'm with the wrong person when the right one comes along. Anybody remember this song? Give me one minute. I'll pull it up. All I can hear now is life is a highway. But it's there. Trust me. In other words, you may get what you want right now. But you might not want it later. If I hadn't bought the car, if I hadn't bought the house, if I hadn't got with the person, you're trying to force it to make it happen and you can't force it. You got to say, God, not my will. Remember Jesus said this, not my will. St. Louis shouted, but thy will be done. Come on, what? Not my will, but thy will be done. Here's the next slide. Just wait until you see why God took his time and didn't do it on your time. The asphalt. Yeah, that's one thing. Just wait till you see God's timing because God's timing is impeccable. Again, we see through a glass darkly. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to start enjoying your life today. People put it off to tomorrow. In the words of Ashton, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you want to hear something? Do you want to hear something good? Yeah. Enjoy right now. Because a few years from now, you'll wish you was, were here right now. You'll look at pictures and go, dang, I had a lot less crow's feet. I, I, my knees didn't hurt as bad. Or, or I, in other words, what I'm telling you is what, what, get your piece of the pot while you got teeth to chew it. Enjoy right here, right now. Stop complaining about politics. Stop complaining about issues. Stop complaining about global warming. Stop complaining, complaining, complaining. Just shut up. We're sick of hearing all of that. Go get a happy meal and get happy. Super sauce and french fries. Have a good time. Who's going with me on this right now? Have a good time, man. I'm tired of it. I'm tired. I'm just done. I'm done. Let's all practice that. Practice, practice. Just say, shut up. See, nobody wants to hear about that. Your vision will have the provision at the right time. Now, I really want you to get a hold of this point right here. There's a tension to manage when you're not quite... How do I say this? Remember when you were like 11 or 12 and you were a young girl or a young guy and you weren't quite a man, but you weren't quite a boy or a little girl yet. Remember this? There's this puberty that you went through. Right? You, you weren't quite a man, but you weren't a boy. This happens in leadership, in life. You're, you're, you, God starts putting this itch in you to do whatever it is that you're called to do. And you start feeling the, the itch and the scratch. And you know, oh, I know this is the way we're going. And you get the, the cart out before the horse. You get out ahead of God. And then when you get out ahead of God, the finance is there, not there. The funding's not there. You're not even ready when you think you're ready. You always think you're ready. St. Louis, I promise there are people. <laughs> Anybody ever thought you were ready, but you weren't really ready? Yeah, that's why T.D. Jake said, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. So, so I, and my story goes like this, you know. I thought my dad would live forever. He was a larger than life type of figure. And at 56 years old, we find out that he has melanoma skin cancer. And just like that, within a matter of months, he's gone. And I remember begging God... God, please, God, it's my best friend, my dad. God, you know, I, I swear I'll do this, I'll do that. I made all these deals with God. And God spoke to me this. He said, when you're not in the will of God, you're in the way of God. I want to say it again. When you're not in the will of God, you're in the way of God. 
Well, to me, I was just kind of shocked by that because I knew my dad loved the Lord, but God didn't say he didn't love him. I knew that my dad was a great Christian. God didn't say anything about him being a great Christian. He just said that he's stopping, he's hurting the flow of what I have prepared for you. Well, I thought, I had no idea that we would do this. In fact, all the campuses, I think they can show footage right now, of all the people at all the campuses today at churches, all these churches that that are going on. At Sunset Hills, you're watching there, and and here, and and, come on, Florida, make some noise. There you are right now. And there's Earth City, come on, packed out. Can't even get in the first service. There's Weldon Springs, and then the list goes on and on and on and on and on. And I don't say that to impress you. I say it to impress upon you. God knew, and he saw all that. All I could see is, don't let my dad go. We got this little church of 180 people and he's the only one that knows the code to this, but God can see through it. Here's my point though. There was a scratching that started happening about a year before my dad died. And I started all of a sudden realized that I had like an itch to preach. And I thought, how is this going to work? Because my my dad, he's not going to let me preach and then I'll need to go start my own thing and then this doesn't work. So I would just shut it down. But the itch was there. And I remember kind of, after about a year of that, I started kind of griping. I'm like, God, my, my dad's fine, everything's fine. I, I mean, when am I going to preach? And I heard the Lord say this kind of in a laughing tone. I don't mean I heard it on the outside, just inside. By the way, the Bible said, my sheep know my voice and a stranger that I follow. You know God's voice. He said, what does he sound like? He sounds like whatever you sound like. Like if you talk slang, he talks slang. He's like, yo, girl, shut your mouth. God will sound like that. Or if you're real proper, you know, Australian people here like, and the Lord shall help you, right? Or that might be Australia, but whatever that is, those people hear that. <laughs> so I heard inside my voice, with my voice tones, I heard the Lord say, you're going to get to do all the preaching you ever want to do. And I thought, wow, I wonder when that's going to happen. Well, about... Three years later, the church starts exploding. My dad passes away. As the church explodes, we go from 200 to 2,000. And now I only have one building. So I go from doing one service to two services to three services to four services on a Sunday to eight services on a Sunday, an additional content creation on a Sunday night and then Tuesday night. And then I said, God, this is going to kill me. And he said, remember I told you, you're going to do all the preaching. Everyone it is. See what I'm saying? Is you're griping and fighting and trying to force it. And don't, don't, don't try to force it. Let the game come to you. Because at the right time, somebody ought to shout amen. In the right season, God is going to move things around and prepare a place for you. And it's going to blow your mind. If you can see how good your future is going to be, you'd get up right now and say, oh my God. Get ready, get ready, get ready. I know God's about to do it in my life. Look at your neighbor and shout amen. Amen. 1 Samuel 16 online, Facebook. Type in where you're watching from. I'm interested to know where our church is. You know, some of our greatest members are online. We have people watching around the world. Uh, Some of our best donors, the most consistent people that pay the bills. They don't even live at any near our campuses. They're in little podunk towns in middle of Arkansas with nothing but a Walmart and a Dollar General. That's the only thing that they have. 1 Samuel 16. And he sent and brought him in. This is when David gets anointed. And it says that David was ruddy, but he had beautiful eyes and he was handsome. Reminds me a lot of Austin and Pastor Micah and Phil. (laughs) And the Lord said, arise and anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil. Oil is a type of the anointing. And anointed him in the midst of his brother's And the spirit of the Lord rushed upon David from that day forward. Now, here's the interesting thing. They anointed him. And everybody saw it. And I'm sure he left like the Disney character. I just can't wait to be king. (laughs) Is it next week? Next next week, right? Next month? Next year? No. Five years from now? No. Ten years from now? What? 15 years? It took 15 years from when God put it in his heart and there was a public display of the ordination of God and the anointing on his life for him absolutely to arrive at the place of the palace and be the king. But good things come to those that wait. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. 
So you want to renew your strength, wait upon the Lord. You want to renew your joy, wait upon the Lord. So, and, and when you decide to wait and say, God, I don't care when, because that's our prayer. When God, when, why God, why? When God, when, why God, why? <laughs> Anybody ever said that? God, when? God, why? Come on, level with me at all camps. Just raise your hand. When? Why? I'm sure God remember that. I, was, I can't tell you why. I, you got to, you got to, when you, I'll bless you when you quit asking when and why. Because when you don't care when and you don't care why, you just say, God, I'm available to use me in whatever way that you want. Because in time, come on, somebody ought to shout amen. In time, shout it again, in time. In time, you will get to where you need to be. But unfortunately, it just takes time. I don't like doing time. I don't like to take time. But you're going to spend time anyway. You might as well spend your time being happy happy and joyful. God, I'm just waiting on you. Yeah, I got a statement. You've heard it a million times. If it's God today, it's for all the visitors with red bags that were happy. They're here. Shout it again so they learn the drill. If it's God today, it's we all, I also say, I didn't mean it. And you say, yes, you did. Yeah, we got a language here. Okay. <laughs> Don't rush it. Psalms 27, verse 14. Are you enjoying this today? Yes. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Take heart. And wait. Again. Look at your neighbor and say, sorry about your weight. I, 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 wait, wait again, and wait again. Oh, that's sick of waiting. Well, the Bible said, "Be strong, take heart, and wait." When, when you decide that you're going to wait and you're not going to freak out about it, the wait just doesn't seem so long. You just be like, "Okay, I'm happy and waiting." The Bible said that the merry heart does good like a medicine. Sometimes you just need to laugh. Y'all are taking your life too serious, by the way. So, you know, none of you get out of here alive. Everybody, nobody. <laughs> and you're not even going to take your stuff. That new car that you wax on, you love on, that new couch that you won't let anybody sit on. <laughs> oh, yeah, all that stuff, the carpet, that, and you're going oh, to take your shoes off when you come in the house. Okay, it's all, the car's going to get scratched. Somebody's going to spill Kool-Aid of all things. Red Kool-Aid on your white couch. I pray they do it today. I do. Just because you, I didn't mean it. Yes, I did. Because I'm sick of you thinking, I got to protect this and I got to protect that. You're just too uptight. Just loosen up a little bit and have some fun and enjoy your weight and be happy now. I'll be happy when the doctor gets back to me on Thursday to see if I'm going to live or die. I'm here to tell you, you're going to die. I don't know when you're going to die, but I don't know for sure that you're going to live. Start living a little bit. Start having a little bit of fun, a little joy, a little peace and tranquility. If you knew how many times the Lord saved you anyway, let's just talk about that for a minute. If you knew the fact that if your wife hadn't have made you late, you'd have got hit by a truck. If you hadn't have left this place early, that would have happened. I think we ought to just go to church and just think about, Lord, I can't wait to get to heaven to see all the videos that you saved my butt from that I didn't know you saved my, I almost married Bob. Oh, oh my God. Gosh, I could have married Bob. I got a little video, I think it kind of demonstrates this. I want to prove my point. Watch this, watch these things happen. The timing of these things. Oh yeah, he's a tither, I can tell. Yep. The Lord just leaves you at the right time. Feel led to leave, bam, there it is. Oh yeah, right time. Watch this guy. You know this guy. You talk about life as a highway. This is Austin. Come on, somebody. Give it up for divine timing. I said, give it up for divine timing. I said, give it up because you, you got video just like that. 
When you get to heaven, gotta be like, what you mean? I ain't never done nothing for you. What you would have done been dead if it had not been for Jesus. Somebody ought to give him praise. Come on, every campus, RPC, Weldon, Ferguson, Earth City, Sunset Hill. Somebody ought to give him a shout today. Teach the white people. Hey! Hey! Yeah! What's funny is to watch some people just go. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You'll see those people in the hall and they'll, they'll go. Pastor David, that was unreal. I'm like, don't you dare do that now. Because you were like, Praise the Lord. And if I ever see you at a cards game, a blues game, or any kind of game, yeah! But in church, you're like, I'm too dignified for that. I'm gonna slap you. In the name of Jesus. Let's look at this slide. Being defeated is often a temporary condition. Giving up is what makes it permanent. So you're defeated just for a minute. There's an old song that said, I cannot be defeated, and I will not quit. I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. I've been loose from Satan's grip. Yeah, so you can't be defeated if you just don't quit. You know how we built all these churches? Just kept preaching when it was raining. Kept preaching when it was snowing. I preached when my mom was slapping me. She didn't like the way the church was going. She was punching me right before I preached, and I was puking all over myself. And Nicole said, you go tell those people about your mom and tell them the truth. They need to know the truth. And I'd get up on the stage, and I wouldn't preach what was happening to me. I would preach what happened to the word. And guess what? In the end, it all worked out because no matter what, tough times don't last, but tough people do. I'm going to shout it again. Tough times don't last, but tough people do. Don't grow weary in well-doing. You will reap. Shout it. If you faint not. Do you can see what God had planned for you? And what he was prepared for you? You would go, oh my God. If I had known, just go with me for a minute. When, when I got married when I was 18, when I knew everything. <laughs> and then there were uh, some bad decisions, and she did some things, and stuff with somebody. And it was a long story, and it was a mess. And I was living in a basement apartment in Baldwin, Missouri, and I was depressed, and I was eating comfort food because that's the way I dealt with it. Didn't have money for a therapist, but I did have money for ice cream. <laughs> Come on, raise your hand right now. And I would go think I need to just get a bowl of this. And then I would go get another bowl. And I'm like, screw it. I'm wasting too much calorie. I know in my heart I'm going to eat all this. So anybody ever taken the whole tub, set it down on your belly. It won't be everybody. Set it down on your belly. The Lord has prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemy. And I would eat it right there. And I was depressed. But then all of a sudden, I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I was sitting there in that basement apartment with all my furniture gone, all my dreams gone, all my hope gone, all my money gone. I don't know if you heard of the new divorce Barbie, but it comes with all Ken stuff. <laughs> and I didn't have nothing. But I turned on a song. It was by Cake. And it said, first I was afraid, I was petrified. Kept thinking how I'd never live without you by my side. And then I spent so many nights just thinking how you'd done me wrong and I grew strong. And I learned how to get along. And so I started, y'all like, I'm gone, so I'm back. They don't know the scripture, but they know that from outer space. Don't come around here looking with that look at your face. I should have changed my stupid life. I should have, okay, that's enough. But what I did is I, I threw the ice cream away and I threw the cakes away and I started walking and I started drinking water and then I started feeling good and then my adrenaline got back and, and all of a sudden serotonin started hitting and I thought, I'm gonna live again and I'm gonna love again and then I met Austin's mama. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Oh! Yeah. Yeah. yeah! I say, you've been running through my mind all day had I known had I known what God was going to do I would have helped the other girl out the door said God bless you may the Lord bless you may the Lord keep you may the Lord 
Somebody ought to understand. It didn't happen to you. It happened for you. I said it didn't happen to you. I said it didn't happen to you. Somebody ought to shout for their breakthrough today. Somebody ought to give God some praise. Who am I talking to? Come on. Every campus. Ra- raise your hand. Wait. You can sit down. Look at your neighbor when you sit down and say, you can listen to the conversation that me and him are having. It might bless you. God's got something for you. And if you just realize that it's God's timing and not your timing, it all works out. The church in Fairview Heights that we're building 20 some odd years ago. My dad was a pastor probably 25 years ago. And I felt a, a stirring in my spirit for us to go over to Illinois and to rent this hotel room and for dad to do meetings there. He did the meetings and he got in it. It was my vision. And he said, why are we doing this? To help people. He said, I don't like doing this. Next month we came back, there was more people. He said, why are we doing this? I said, to help people. He said, I don't want to do this. Third month, more people. It was amazing. I was loving it. He said, why are we doing this? I said, because it's helping people. He said, not only do I not want to do it, I'm not going to do it. It's not what I'm doing. He was comfortable being comfortable. He was comfortable sitting at home watching Lonesome Dove, which, by the way, is a three-day journey, (laughs) which is nothing in comparison to our Netflix and chill these days, you know. One episode to another, but he got comfortable just sitting on the couch. Got comfortable just preaching on Sunday, preaching on Tuesday, and you got to be careful getting comfortable. Because whenever you get too comfortable, I'm going to stir you to get you uncomfortable. Because God wants you to take risk. There is no faith without risk. There is no reward without risk. Every church that you've seen, everything that you see that we've done together, we did it with risk. And we did it with, I want, if God doesn't show up, we're going to go broke. But I'm glad we stepped out on the water and we took water walking moments for every person. And the sound of my voice that is in our churches today, somebody that it might be even heaven today, actually bought the seat that you're in. Somebody ought to give God praise for those people who gave their tithes, gave their offerings, and served on the lead team. Now watch this. I'm almost done. I'm a minute and 35 seconds over on this turn. If you're taking medicine, you need to know that. <laughs> Somebody's like, keep going. A lot of our churches have services that spin another one right away. And every time you keep going, a campus pastor somewhere at one of the campuses is going, shut up. You can't get them in, get them out, get the kids checked in. But this lady here is like, keep going. I got all day. I love it. So now, a couple of three years ago, I guess, I feel the Lord stirring me. He wakes me up. He says, I want you to go over to Shiloh, Illinois. He says Shiloh because it means meeting place with God. As I'm passing... Fairview Heights, Illinois, the Lord said, I told you Shiloh because I knew you would know what that means, but stop here. And I stopped at the exit. I get out of my car. The sun is coming up. And I look over now to the movie theater, which is now yours, you own it. And it wasn't for sale. And I looked over here and that wasn't for sale. In the natural eyes, nothing looked like it was available there. Right. wonder what this means. Then God speaks to me and said, this is the exit where you would take your dad. And you sowed seeds here 25 years ago. And I'm going to cause you to come back to the place where you sowed seed and you to gather a harvest of souls and change people's lives right here at this exit. I came here to West Palm, came to the church in St. Louis, and I told you guys for my prayer log. This is what God told me and God showed me. Well, because I made the vision clear. Remember this? The Bible said... Write the vision, make it clear so people can run with it. Write the vision, have a, write the vision, make it clear so people can run with it. By the way, that helps with you. You have to, you can Google that. I think it's Habakkuk 2, 2 maybe. It's just write the vision. So in other words, if you don't know where you're going, how will you know when you get there? So you have to know where you're going. You have to discover what, what do I want my body to look like? What do I want my house to look like? What do I want my life to look like? 
because you're obeying God affects a lot of other people. Now, because I made the vision clear and everybody knew, someday he's going to Fairview Heights, Illinois. I'm on our family vacation and we're in Saint somewhere, Saint Thomas, Saint Croix, Saint something. And I get a DM on Instagram. If some girl is driving down the road and she heard my vision maybe a year before and she goes, hey, PD, I wanted to let you know that I just see them putting up a for sale sign on this movie theater and I thought it might be my church. I'm in St. Kitts or St. Croix or St. wherever and I wanted to be in St. Louis because I was like, man, I need to be there because I knew it in here. That's it, that's it. So immediately I called the number. And then come to find out we're in this little bidding war with Tesla. Tesla wants to buy it because it's off the highway. Tesla wants to buy it because they're growing organization. And I'm like, God, I believe that's our building. And all of a sudden, Tesla has a total collapse and crash of their stock. Their stock drops. They freak out. They back out. Faith Church, you jump in. You buy the building. And no longer will people charge a car there, but people will charge their life there. But it started 25 years ago. Are you getting what I'm saying right now? That just because God dropped it in your heart today doesn't mean it's going to harvest tomorrow. But in due time, oh, somebody ought to say, I said at the right time, at the right moment, God's about to give you double for your trouble. And if you can only see what God can see, you get up and shout. Stand up with me at all the campuses. Look at your neighbor, kind of move around just a little bit. Come on, like you're stretching. Come on, doing yoga. Come on, give me some of that. Shout, I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. Come on, somebody say, I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to run. I'm getting ready to get it. Shout, 24 is an open door like never before. And I will see my dream become a reality because I'm committed. I decree and declare that I don't mind the weight. I'm going to count it as joy when I fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, God's going to turn it around for my good. High five your neighbor on both sides. Come on, high five them, high five them, high five them. Come on, somebody ought to make some noise. High five them. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said, yeah. Yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, aren't you glad I made you come today? Faithful, faithful, faithful. There's just something about this, something about church, online church, in the building church, just church. And I got some DMs earlier from people at our church at the Lake of the Ozarks, it's a beautiful day today, and they were out on their big sea rays, and they were having church with their family on a sea ray. And I was like, I'll be there as quick as I can. <laughs> you can have church anywhere, but you need to feel this. And there's something about being in the presence of God that just makes you feel better. And I have that question here at all campuses. Raise your hand if you say, man, I feel like like I'm pregnant or something. I feel my baby kicking. I feel, come on, I feel like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I feel it kicking. I feel it stirring. Oh, God, my God, I need you. Oh, God, my God, I need you now. How I need you. I'm standing on your faithfulness. Come on, lift your hands and sing it. Nobody leave it. Just lift your hands and sing it. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, it feels good. How I need you now. Oh right. Four. But when you see people singing and worshiping, she's a dream teamer here in Florida. And uh, this has been about two years ago now. Two years ago, last week, her and her husband went to Cabo or somewhere in Mexico. 
And they were on this fuller little escapade. And her husband had an accident and died. Tragically killed. She came back to Faith Church and we all cried. And we're devastated because we're like, we were just with him. We just saw him, man. What, what in the world? And when I was watching her a second ago out of the corner of my eyes, seeing her sing. This morning when I was on the front row worshiping God. And I looked at her. She'll never know the encouragement she brought me. Because she's been through something very few people have went through. And she's up here today singing and worshiping God. Come on, will you sing it for them? Come on, let's sing it together. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Just sing it out to him. Thank God. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you. Now. Oh, that's it. Come on, some of y'all are getting it. Lift your hand in every building. Come on, Weldon. Come on, Ferguson. Roll palm everywhere. Oh God, my At home. God, I need you. On your boat. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock the ages. Oh rock, oh rock the ages. I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faithfulness. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness that we feel today at church. God, we pray for our country. People are so confused and they're so lost, so woke, so broke. God, let us know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus is the answer. God, help us to win people this week. We don't just go to church and say it made me feel better. I don't want to talk about religion, politics at work. We're not talking about religion. We're talking about relationship and what saved us. We know will save them. And God, give us a boldness this week. Wherever we're at to invite people, to bring people to church. Because people are destitute. They're hurting. They're lost. They're in pain. God, yes, we can go in through television. And we do. We share, 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 share on social media. And we do. And God, nothing beats one-on-one evangelism sharing what Jesus did for us to save other people and the pain that they're going through. You gotta pray for people, I feel this, we're almost done, but I feel the Holy Spirit say, loss. Every person who has suffered loss, a loss of a loved one, a loss of a spouse, a loss of hope, the Lord tells me to tell you today to get your hopes back because you're going to meet the right person. You're going to come in contact with the right associate. And the Lord is going to open up doors in 24 like never before. But you need to get your hopes up and your expectation on right now. Victory is in me, says the Lord. Health and healing and wholeness is in me, says the Lord. And you're stirred when you come into my house in this space, in this place, every week and dedicate you and your family to God we give you praise and glory for it. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. You know, this week, my little grandson, he, uh, he's two, and he had some kind of clogged something, some kind of duct in his mouth or something, and it, it caused his face to swell up like twice its size, and they didn't know what was wrong, and we were in St. Louis, and they rushed him to the hospital here in Palm Beach County where he was born, and, and they did a bunch of, of work on him and testing, but not one time did I ever get fearful about wonder what's going to happen to him. I didn't even rush down here because I was working there. And I knew I had work to do in St. Louis and my flesh was like, oh, I want to be with my grandson. In fact, last night when I saw him, I'm like, hey, buddy, I heard you went to the hospital. He said, I hurt, I hurt, I hurt. And it hurt me to think I wasn't there. But my point was, is I never doubted one time that God was going to disappoint me or Austin or Morgan or our family because I knew we've given our lives to Jesus and Jesus, we've given our baby to you. And miraculously, they said, even when he went through the CAT scan, he needs to be still for three minutes. Guys, this would be impossible. 
He literally, if we've ever seen a miracle, this is a miracle. This is a bigger miracle than, than manna out of the sky. It's a bigger miracle than water into wine. If you knew him, this is a total divine act of God. And he did it. So I said that to say this. God doesn't love me more than he loves you. And he hasn't forgot about you. You feel unhealthy or unhappy or I'm, I'm too this or I'm too that or I'm too bound. You're too nothing except too blessed. And I believe in you too much to leave here today not telling you. You're going to make it. Come on, somebody. You're stronger than you think you are. You can fuller than you think you are. You're going to live longer than you think you are. Hey, thank you for watching Faith Church on YouTube. And I want you to subscribe so you can know whenever we go live and post new content. You can also comment below and let us know if the message spoke to you. When you're watching, also know that we wanna pray for you. We wanna know what's going on in your world. So you can comment below and we'll pray for you. Thanks again for watching on YouTube and we'll see you next time.